My problem would be if there's no ban that there will be a new arms race and proliferation of this technology throughout the world and I think that will be a real danger to humanity. My biggest concern is the protection of civilians, but if we can't protect our civilians, these can get through very quickly. They could be used for assassination attacks on politicians as well. So it's a total nightmare, and I can't really predict where it would go. I know it won't go very anywhere very pleasant, but how far it will go and how bad it will be, I have no idea. Welcome back. We're discussing the use of drones in military operations and the future of this technology. Joining us now from the United Kingdom is Noel Sharkey. What I've got here is a predator and prey, like you see in the wild. I have horrible dreams about children, a child with a toy gun running out in front of a soldier, his mother screaming at him to come back. A soldier would understand that setting, a robot wouldn't, and think, oh... There's... I'm a pretty, was a pretty standard professor of robotics and artificial intelligence for a long time, particularly working in machine learning and training robots. But about um, 2007, a journalist asked me some questions about military robots and I knew nothing about them. And so I went off to look it up. And I was really shocked by what I read and spent six or seven months reading it and then became what essentially an accidental activist, writing articles for the papers, going out there, pushing it, setting up an organisation called the International Committee for Robot Arms Control, which will be 10 years old this year. There's a lot of argument about definitions of lethal autonomous weapons, but those arguments are mainly from people who are trying to put brakes on at the UN. Uh, it's quite simple, really. It's a, it's a weapon that, once it's been launched, works completely without human supervision. So it selects targets, tracks targets, and applies force to them. It can be lethal force or any other kind of force, but violent force, and it's as simple as that. Robots acting on their own, hunting down humans and killing them. What's only been seen in Hollywood could soon be coming to a battlefield near you. The Pentagon investing billions of dollars to develop autonomous weapons, machines that could one day kill on their own. There are some uh, weapons at the moment that you could call autonomous that have been used for some time. For instance, the Iron Dome in Israel, which shoots down missiles. Uh, there are a number on, uh, really a lot on ships, naval ships, that are switched on if they're being swarmed by an air attack. So they have sensors and will fire themselves, but there's always a human there to switch them off again. Now, the ones that I'm concerned about are being developed by the US, China, Israel, Russia, and the UK. And these can be things like the Americans have the X-47B. That's a fighter jet that takes off and lands on aircraft carriers on its own and can refuel in the air. And it has 10 times the reach of the normal F-25 fighter jet. Smaller, you can get many more on there. So it's designed for use in the Pacific. But then there are tanks, there are submarines, and any kind of conventional weapon. So we're not talking here about a, a big Terminator-like uh, humanoid thing with a machine gun. We're talking here about conventional-looking weapons, and then they're just made autonomous. So submarines, for instance, can sink diesel-engine ships. They could sink other ships as well. At the moment, when the United States leaves Afghanistan or Iraq, they fly drones over all the time. With autonomous weapons, you can leave them there forever. They can be solar powered. You can fly new ones in to replace them. Uh, you'll have them flying around the planet. You'll have them guarding borders. And of course, when they're guarding borders, someone will attack and they'll attack back and then a whole war will start up. Kalashnikov recently announced uh, a gun that had neural network targeting, so it was targeting using machine learning. Dynetics is developing Gremlin's technology for DARPA to shape the future of unmanned airborne operations. These operations are growing in scope and scale. The United States tend to advertise most of their stuff on the internet because they saber rattle a lot to scare their opponents. And that's one of the problems because it doesn't scare their opponents. What it does is make them think, oh my God, we better hurry up and catch up. And so you get this potential for an arms race through that. But I would say China are the next leaders, 
but it's very difficult to penetrate China and find out what exactly they're, they're making. They don't talk about it publicly. Well, there's a, a real problem with autonomous weapons. It's really important that we stop them. There are many risks and they sort of fall into, into three major categories. One is uh, morality, and that's not something I work on. I'm a tech person, uh, but the idea that delegating the decision to kill to a machine is against human dignity. And there's a lot of moral problems there, a lot of moral philosophers talking about it. Now I come in on the tech front where I'm very, well, my biggest concerns were the ability to, to discriminate between civilians and military. And no matter what people tell you about what's happening in the labs, we're nowhere near the ability to discriminate between civilians and, and other targets not in a real life situation, not in the fog of war. We've got a principle of proportionality, one of the cornerstones of the laws of war. And the principle of proportionality essentially means that, paraphrasing, you can kill civilians or damage civilian property, providing it's of direct concrete military advantage. So it's a balancing game and only a human can make that decision. It's not quantifiable. Those are some of the risks. One of the goals of the International Committee of Ro Robot Arms Control back in 2009 when we started was just to get international discussion going. When the campaign started and we went to the UN, then we had at last discussion among governments and they were very slow to come forward before that. And even at the UN for four years, we were getting nowhere. It was just like excuses, excuses. I don't understand the definition. And the only people who, did, who said they didn't understand the definition were the high tech countries who were actually making them strangely. Now they're beginning to come forward. We're hearing what they really have to say. And what they're all mostly saying is, we really have to ensure human control somewhere there in weapons. 26 countries now have joined the call for a prohibition. So it's getting somewhere with governments. There's no global agreement on lethal autonomous weapons. It could be really, really awful. Many other nations could start making them with unregulated and using them any way they like. And we've also got concern about authoritarian dictators using them. We've seen so often that even Egypt, Russia, when there's a revolution, the soldiers refusing to fire. Well, now you've got a bunch of programmers in a room who are forced to program them that way and you send out the robots. So we've really got to push really hard, for instance, at the Human Rights Council, the UN Human Rights Council, to try and get laws so that these are banned in all circumstances. As anybody in the campaign to stop killer robots would tell you, we're only against the critical functions of applying violent force targeting uh, by AI systems, but autonomous systems themselves, we've nothing against them. For instance, humanitarian effort, humanitarian crises, flying in food supplies, finding out where people are, looking for them, sending in drones, autonomous drones and forest fires. There's lots of robots, for instance, monitoring water quality in lakes. There are little robots at the bottom of the ocean telling you the acid content. There's, there's robot autonomous submarines going under the ice caps all the time, measuring melting. So there's so many uses for this technology. But in military terms, what I would most like to see this being used for is autonomous bomb disposal robots. So they can go out in front of a column of soldiers and find EODs, explosive uh, ordnance really, improvised explosive devices, because that's what's killed most of our young men. And I'd rather billions of dollars was sunk into a project like that than developing one more horrible offensive weapon that's bad for mankind.